I'd like to again thank everybody for joining us. Again, my name is Matt McLaughlin, and I'm joined by my colleague Steve Webster. Today we're going to discuss a few total care uh, tips and tricks for uh, this webinar this month. And uh, in, in light of today being Halloween, we've got a nice little spooky Google image there. And I don't know if anybody's had a chance, but if you go to Google.com today, check out what they've done with their logo. It's actually really cool. It's about a 30-second video clip. Uh, and it actually it speeds up and shows a time lapse of them carving these pumpkins that weigh look they look like they weigh a hundred pounds each, uh, and then as uh, they finish the night happens and it lights up. It's uh, really really cool. So if you do get a chance, swing on over to Google.com and check that out. They always do fun stuff on on all these holidays. So well we're going to go ahead and just uh, move through some of these slides here. For those of us that are new to the to the GoToWebinar interface here, a couple of things that I wanted to point out, and I, I we do encourage you all to answer or ask any questions that you may have during any of these presentations, and, and we, we highly encourage that. And if there's other things that you want to see that you didn't see during this session, just let us know, and we'll be able to answer any of those questions for you. But uh, for, if you'd like to enter a question, we recommend that entering it in through the questions panel is probably the best way to do that. We are notified of the question. We'll be able to stop in the presentation and answer that question. Also, if you're connected to the audio to verbally speak here, you'll be able to raise your hand, and I'll also be notified of that, and we will be able to unmute you and answer your question that way as well. So why go with Dido? Uh, we use this slide to, in our presentations just really to point out the services that Dido offers as a reseller of Google Apps. So we are an authorized reseller of Google, App, Google Apps as well as Google Postini services and we have been featured in the Google I.O. sandbox in 2010 and 2011. We hope uh, to keep this theme going and participate in next year's Google I.O. conference there. It's a lot of fun. We offer services such as project management, technical configuration, we provide the proper communications and change management services when deploying Google Apps. We also offer total care support, which we are actually uh, looking to restructure here shortly, and you'll be being notified of that. Um, but in the name change will, will happen as well. But essentially, it will still be the same total care support, which is ongoing administrative support while you are a client of Dido. And we also do a little bit of custom app development. And uh, so those are some of the really nice features that Dido has to offer as an organization. So when you do put the product Google together with Dido, you have the, prop, the perfect solution. And you can see that everybody is extremely happy and some are dancing. So today's agenda, some of the things we're going to be talking about, and, and you might be familiar with some of these, but we find that um, you know, there's so much to learn about, about Google Apps in general that... Uh, you know, you get to the basics and, and you're able to function that way, but there might be some ways that you all uh, want to learn how to do things, things a little bit differently and maybe even uh, more effective. Um, so what we're going to talk about is some tips and tricks. And in mail, we're going to discuss multiple account sign-in within Google Chrome. We'll also talk about hiding labels when not being used and showing those labels if uh, the messages inside those labels are unread. And this is nice if you have filters set up here. With Calendar, we're going to talk about scheduling a similar event using the More Actions tab. I don't know how many times I've had an event, and I've wanted to create a, uh, a similar event that I've gone to More Actions and just quickly created that so I could just change the date there, which is it's really nice. Uh, and also, one of the tricks we're going to show is showing only this calendar. And this helps if you are viewing a lot of calendars. You can quickly show the calendar you want to focus on uh, for the period of time you wish to do so. In Docs, we're going to talk about creating a collection, shared Docs with all shared on the collection. Um, we'll discuss that. We'll also talk about uh, the new look in Docs and some of the features that are available when viewing the Docs list. You can actually change the density from comfortable, cozy, or compact. It's a personal preference, but it is a trick if you if you have a lot of documents listed on there. And we'll wrap things up today with sites, talking about improving your sites with charts. This is one of the tips we're going to go over and also embedding a, ver a visualization motion chart into your site. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to minimize my account, that slide here, and we'll talk about mail here. 
we'll discuss, the first thing I want to do is discuss multiple account sign-in within Google Chrome. And the benefits of this are when you have, let's say, a personal Google account, and which a lot of us do. So, you know, we have our, we have our uh, Google Apps account with your organization, and we also have our personal Gmail account. Well, before setting up this setting that we're about to look at, you're not able to actually have both of these accounts open in the same browser. Before, what happens is if you were to try to open up a new tab and then log into your Gmail account, it would sign you out of your other account. And Google has provided us with a workaround here. So uh, everybody that's in their Google Apps inbox right now, what you can do is you go up to the right hand cor uh, up to the right hand corner next to your name list. There, you simply click on the drop down arrow and then select Account Settings. If you click Account Settings here, you're brought to some personal settings. Uh, a little bit about your profile here. This is about your Google account. Um, Actually, while we're here, I also this is where you can change your password if you have the ability to, to do that. And uh, some of your other products are listed here as well. You can uh, make some adjustments there. We're going to talk about this feature here, multiple sign-in. And what I want to do is, if you have not enabled this already, it says off. And what we want to do is we want to go ahead and click edit here to turn this feature on. Now, first couple things we're going to have to do is simply click on here. And then they're asking you to select each of the check boxes below to confirm that you understand how to use multiple sign-in. So after you've read these items here and agreed and you know confirmed that you ain't understand what will be happening here, select the check boxes and then select save. It says your account information has been updated and saved. So I want to go ahead and X that out. One thing we recommend doing is actually signing out of your account here and then signing back in to ensure that this change has taken place. So simply go back up to that drop down arrow and then select sign out. So we'll go ahead and click sign out here. And I'm going to sign back in. So I'm signing back into my account. Now nothing looks different except when you go back up to the top here. Again, we're going to go right back to that drop down arrow next to our name, click on that, and then I want to ask you to switch account. And if you click switch account, these, what you're going to see here is if anybody has delegated their inbox to you so that you could answer emails on their behalf, that their names will be listed here. But what I want you to look at now, you didn't have this option before, you have the option now is sign into another account. And if you click on that option here, a new tab will open, and I'm actually going to go ahead and open up my personal Gmail account here. I'm going to go ahead and sign in. And now what you'll notice is that after I'm signed in here, I've got my Gmail account, which I have a lot of my Groupon and, and I, such items coming in here. What I can do now is that I have my Google Apps account open here. And then now in the same browser, I also have my personal Gmail account. And this is helpful if uh, you, know, you're, you use your personal Gmail account, maybe even for some work items, uh, but you just want to keep up uh, with, with the account through the day, and it's, you're able to now have that open in two different, er, two different tabs in one browser, so you can just bounce back and forth, and nothing has been signed out. So that's a really nice feature that you have available to you, and uh, that's one of the tips we wanted to, uh, to show you in mail. Now, one of the tricks that we're going to show in mail is hiding labels when not being used and showing if unread. Now, some of us might, again, already utilize this feature, uh, but a lot of us uh, maybe don't because when you do get, a, um, you know, signed up with Google Apps, there's a lot to learn and you kind of miss some of the features here. So that's why we provide these monthly webinars so that you can uh, see what we have going on here. All right, so now what we're going to do is, uh, is simply discuss, again, how to hide labels when not being used and show up unread. So I don't have any labels that I have cre created here, so I'm going to go ahead and quickly create a label. And again, you notice that the system labels are here. If you have the five more section or whatever that number may be, simply click on that drop down arrow and we'll go ahead and select create new label. So I'm going to create a new label here. We'll name this the Halloween webinar. We'll go ahead and select create. We will provide this with a orange color here to make it stand out. Okay. So now what I want to do is if, if I had a bunch of personal labels that I have created over time. 
maybe there are some that I just don't use much anymore. You know, I, I, maybe it was for a certain project or what have you. Uh, you know, if you're not using that label anymore, there's no nothing wrong with hiding that label when it's not being used. And I want to quickly just point out how to do that here. You can simply click on the drop down arrow right next to the label, and then you have these options here. This is considered the label list, which we have here. And this right here is considered the mail, the message list, pardon me. And, you know, the two differences there. This is where your labels are, and here's where your messages are. Now, you have the options to do to, uh, with, these, with these labels here. In the label list, you can show it always, which is showing at all times. You have the ability to show if the messages are unread, and you also have the ability to hide these labels here. Now, if I wanted to simply hide this label, I could just simply click Hide here. And notice how the number changed from 5 to 6. If I click on that drop-down arrow, you can see now that that, web, that label that I created is still here. I didn't delete it. It's just not visible to me at the moment here. Now, if I wanted to take any further action on that, again, maybe in the message list, if, I've had, um, if I had this label maybe set up as a filter, uh, or filter behind this label so that messages coming in that contain the word Halloween would automatically have that label attached to it. When they would come in, they would have the Halloween label on the message. And maybe I didn't want those messages, those labels to show in my message list because for some reason maybe I feel like it clutters my message list or I just don't like a bunch of, uh, of colorful distractions on my message list that's a personal preference. You could choose to show or hide that in the message list as well. And that essentially means if you hide it in the message list, you will not see the tag that you've placed onto the message or that has been placed automatically due to the filter that you have here. So with that, we want to, I want to show you what that looks like if the messages are unread. So what I'm going to do is we saw what it looks like when it's hidden here. And I'm actually going to quickly show it back in the list here. And I'm going to just place a couple of these on there so you can just see what that looks like here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and take some of these messages, place them out of my inbox here, and put them into the label. So I'm going to click on that. I'm going to move to the Halloween webinar. And we'll take one more here and we'll move it over to that label as well. Now, I'm going to go ahead. If you notice, the messages that I put in there are unread. So I'm going to say in the label is show if unread. And you can see that it still remains here. And it's actually highlighted because inside I have two or multiple messages that are unread. So there's the difference there. You can either hide it permanently, not permanently, but hide it so that you're not visible at all times, or show if the messages are unread. And that's a very helpful thing. If you have a lot of different folders, a lot of different filters created or labels, a lot of different rules created or filters, pardon me, you'll be able to have all those there for you. Okay? Any questions on, uh, on the tips and tricks for mail? Okay, perfect. All right, so what we're going to do now is discuss some features for Google Calendar. And to open the calendar, again, I just slide it to the Universal Navigation Bar, select Calendar here, and cap my calendar opens in a new tab here. Now, I want to go ahead and discuss sketch, scheduling a similar event when using the More Actions tab. And this will be our tip for this uh, this demonstration here. So as a tip, I'm going to show you how to do this here. So look, I've created a, an event here on my calendar. It's the budget meeting that we have to, on Wednesday, uh, November 2nd. We're going to discuss a few items during this budget meeting. But maybe this isn't going to be a recurring event that I have recur every four, or, you know, for every week for the next four or five weeks. Maybe I just want to have this set up this week and also next week. Now, there's no point in going and creating two of these events at two different times and putting in the same information. So once you've created the event at one time, what you can do is you can simply click on that event. As you can see, my color calendar is this pink color here, and I want to just simply click on that on my calendar, the event on my calendar. Now here's all the calendar or the event details for the event that we have scheduled. And to create the duplicate event, I come simply come up here to more actions, which is this drop down arrow, and I have a couple of options here. I can change the owner of the event if I choose to do so, but this time I want to go ahead and duplicate the event. So if I click on that, notice what happens here. It creates a duplicate event, and I can change. Maybe this will be budget meeting number two, okay? 
and I can change the date here. Now, it's got all the same information that we're going to discuss. And we'll go ahead and do it a week later on the 9th. We're still going to discuss fourth quarter numbers, projections for first quarter 2012, and we're still looking to hire some new accountants in our firm. So what I'm going to do is now that I've adjusted the title accordingly as well as the date and maybe even change the time, I'm going to move it up an hour due to some other meetings that uh, were happening for other people, I can simply click Save once I've made any changes. Maybe I want to invite some new guests here. I'll go ahead and, and invite Jeremy. Okay, so I've got Jeremy now, and he wasn't going to, he wasn't able to make it to the first meeting. I'm going to invite him to this one. I click save here. Do I want to send the invitations? Yes, I'm going to send the invitations. And now, if we scroll over to the ninth here, you're going to see the budget meeting on the calendar on the second. So it was really easy to just create another event, make some minor um, changes to the event, and essentially it's the same structure of meeting that you want to have, just on a different date and time. So that's a uh, a nice feature that we have available to us there. That's the tip. Now, if I was, uh, we're going to go ahead and show you the trick here for Google Calendar. If I was looking at a bunch of calendars, let's say, you know, I added a bunch of different calendars here. Okay. You can see how the calendar itself looks, you know, a little bit busy. And maybe you're trying to schedule some items out for some upcoming events and you really need to focus on just your calendar. You know, but also you, you typically do look at the people's calendars that you have highlighted, but you really need to focus in on your calendar. This drop down arrow, similar to the way it was with the label and mail, you know, you just hover over the calendar that you wish, the name there, and then you have a drop down arrow which will show you some additional options. Click on that drop down arrow, and here is where you have some options. The first one that we're going to point out here is the one we want to discuss. It's display only this calendar. So if I click on that option, it'll just display my calendar. And this is helpful in case, let's say you do have 20 calendars here, and you have, you're looking, constantly looking at 10 of them. Well, instead of having to go and click on their names here, each individual one, it's one click, it's two clicks. One click, two click, and two clicks. And you're just showing the calendar, which is your calendar. Maybe you didn't want to look at, maybe you just wanted to focus on Jim's calendar. You could say display only this calendar. You can kind of see what his schedule is looking like this week. It looks like he's got a lot of items going on here. So being able to quickly display only this calendar is a nice feature. Also notice the other settings that we have available to you. When you do click on that drop-down arrow again, you can go to the calendar settings for this calendar. You can create an event on this calendar. You can share this calendar. And you can also subscribe to the notifications for this specific calendar. And if you're not feeling the pink, maybe you want to go with more of a a seasonal color will go with this brown color here. Okay. Any questions there on the tips and tricks for calendar? Okay, excellent. Thank you very much. All right, so we'll, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and take a look at Docs now and a couple of new features in Docs and uh, some tips and tricks here. So, again, I'm going to close that out. I'll go back to my Docs list here or just to open up my Docs and click on Docs from the Universal Navigation Panel, and I have my Docs list created here. Now, what we're going to show you, the tip for the Google Docs today is simply showing how to create a collection to share Google Docs with all shared on the collection. So essentially what that means is that you could create a collection, place documents into this collection, and then share that collection out. And what that means is anything in that collection that you've placed in there, regardless if they do, if the people that you're sharing with do or do not have access to the individual documents in the collection, they will have access to them because they've shared the overall collection. So let's go ahead and, and, and do that here. I'm going to go to create here, and actually if you notice, we're looking at the docs list in the new view. Uh, and you do have that option at, right now with the older version. If you were to go up to the gear here in the right hand corner, you could, instead of this saying use the classic look, this will say use the new look and I recommend maybe trying this out because eventually this is what it's going to look like by default uh, and, and that's all you're going to see. You'll be able to go back to the classic look for just a temporary period of time but this is a more modern sleeker looking view and they've really been able to you know kind of maximize the space with this new look. So let's talk about creating that collection. Just simply go to create here, create collection. Okay. And again, we're going to stick with the Halloween theme, so we'll go. 
up with the Halloween documents here. Simply click OK. So I have this collection now created here. I'm going to go back to the home, and I'm going to place some documents into this collection here. I am going to go ahead and simply highlight this document. I'll highlight this document, this document, and we'll take one more, and we'll click here. Now, with the new with the new layout here, notice these options that appeared after I have selected these documents. Well, I have the ability to, if I, that's asking me, do I want to share these documents? I can organize them, which is what we were going to do, or I can move these to the trash. I also have preview and more options available here. Let's say we're going to go ahead and organize these, which we, when we click on organize, we're going to select where we want to put them. We're going to put them into the Halloween documents collection. I click apply changes. So now, as you can see, each one of these items I have has now had the Halloween documents tag uh, placed onto it. And really, as you can see, none of these people, uh, none of, I have these documents are, uh, only a couple of them are being shared, but uh, this one in particular, actually all of them are being shared, but what I want to do is I want to share them out with everybody, not individual people, so or sp other specified people. So what I'm going to do is uncheck these here. And let's verify that they are inside of our Halloween documents uh, collection that we created. Here are the four documents. Now, I click on the drop-down arrow next to the collection, which is down here, and I want to click Share. And I'm going to share this. And the sharing uh, settings window pops up here. It's very similar. It looks exactly the same, actually, as the one that you do when you have a regular document there. And now I can choose to share these with people in or outside of my domain, depending on the settings that you have, the administrator has set for your domain here. So ultimately what I'm doing here is I'm going to share and save this with Steve. And yes, so he's on this collection. And what this means is that now, even if Steve had no access to these documents individually, he will be able to see these documents now that I've shared them on the uh, collection. Now also, which is what is great about this, if, if there were more Halloween documents that you've created maybe in two or three weeks, maybe you're planning next year's party, or a year from now and you've created some more Halloween documents, you can simply add those documents to that label or to the collection here, and no matter what, whoever has the access to it will still have access to that document that you've placed in there. So it can be a, a constant moving collection and adding document process to that throughout a period of time. So that's a really helpful feature. And this is great if you had projects going on and there were constantly people creating documents, placing them in here to, to ensure that everybody has access to it. So that's really where it comes in um, comes into play here and, and it's an extremely helpful feature. And the last, uh, the last item I'm going to show before I hand it over to Steve is the trick for the new look here. And if you look here, you know, we have a docs list, and depending on how you like to look at your docs or how many docs you have, Google has now provided us with an option to change the density of the documents from comfortable, cozy, or compact. And let's go ahead and show you what that looks like. You have this uh, little option here. It looks like a, a little flower or more of a, 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 of, a, of a gear as well, but I don't want to get these two gears confused here. But we'll go ahead and click on this one within the actual docs page. And now I have the display density here, from comfortable, cozy, or compact. Now I'm viewing it in comfortable here. As you can see, it looks comfortable. If I wanted to maybe look at the cozy look here, I can look at cozy. You can see how it tightens up a little bit more. And this all depends on how you like to look at your docs. The last one we want to show you here is the compact look. And this is uh, helpful, you know, if, you're, if you want to see more docs per page here. And it just like, looks nice, high and tight look there, you know, depending on what you want to look at you can change it back to comfortable. It gives it more of a relaxed feel. Um, and this is one of the new features that's available to you with the new look, and it's, again, just a personal um, personal setting there. So now we're going to take a look at sites here. So, Steve, I'm going to go ahead and pass the presentation on over to you. Okay, thank you. And we'll send it over there. My pleasure. So uh, sending on and on over there, go ahead and display that when you're ready, Steve. Will do. OK, 
Okay, Matt, can you confirm that? You can see my screen? Hey, Steve, I actually think you sent it back over to me on accident here. Let me go ahead and I'll just uh, make you the presenter here. All right, thank you. And then you'll see the option to show your screen there. Sorry about that. Okay, right, there we you got go. it now. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Yes, uh, we have a tip for you with sites. Sometimes with sites, we use techniques to show perhaps an embedded spreadsheet, like we have here in this chart, Data and Ocean Chart Groups spreadsheet. And one thing that we could do to spice up is to add charts. And there's been some progress in this with sites. And I just want to point out one of those items and where we can actually go into a site, a particular page, go into edit, and insert this very cool looking motion chart. Uh, it's motion because it actually has a play button. And once I click play here, you can see that data moves over time. And it's using this particular spreadsheet with the date. We can actually speed up the time over here or slow it down. And it has other charts as well. Looks like a bar chart. And there's a line chart where it doesn't have the, uh, the play button. And in this case, from the spreadsheet, we have, we can display things in different categories, in color and so forth. Sizes, let's say we want to uh, have it larger if it's dealing with expenses. And we can select certain items to highlight. And it also has a gadget here, a wrench in this case, where the settings are. If I click on that, we have a non-selected items. We have how to zoom at a particular segment of the graph. And there's advanced, which I'll show you in just, I'll, I'll get into this just in a moment. So let's show you how to uh, embed this cool looking motion chart into any of your site pages. All right, so to do so, I have some instructions right up here, in fact. If you want to edit the web page, click the insert, click more gadgets, and when a pop-up occurs, you want to enter in the gadget name of motion chart, click search, and there's a couple versions of that. I suggest that you select the Google's version and enter parameters. And if you want to learn more, there is a code google.com API for charts. But if you simply look for it in a Google search by entering this keyword, you'll find this web page. It has the same example listed here. That's written more so for the developer. But let's take a look at this as if we're not, if we don't care about the details. So let's go ahead and follow these instructions. Let's go ahead and go into edit mode. And let's go ahead and insert perhaps right here. So we want to edit page, which we have, which we have done. Now we want, we want to go into click insert and more gadgets. And in the search box, let's go ahead and type in motion chart. Press enter or click the search key. We have three three that show up in this case. So let's take the official Google gadget. We'll select this one. And we confirm it's from Google Engineering. We'll click select. The data source for the URL. Well, this is the uh, spreadsheet that we're referring to. So in this case, here's the spreadsheet where it's very simple. Fruit, date, sales, expenses, location. We've got some rows. So I want to just highlight this URL in the Omni box. Copy that. Paste that right into here. Give it a title. We'll talk about this default state in just a moment, but you can leave it blank for now. You can refresh this 
if we want to. Just give me a minute. And we can say 100% across the screen, or if I want to choose, let's say, 650 in width, I can do that. <coughs> and you can decide if you want to check or uncheck these. Click OK. Now the gadget is here. While we're in edit mode, it still looks like this. So if I click anywhere on this box, I can always go back to the properties and make edits here, which we'll do in a moment. So now if I click Save, we have successfully displayed the chart according to that spreadsheet. Now it's possible to say, well, by default, I'm looking at all this, and I've included it to my web page, but I would like to uh, have this as a default, always. I want to highlight those. So how do you do that? Because that's only an interactive. Well, to make that a permanent state, as it's called, I can go into my settings. And remember that advanced? Well, we're going to click on it, where it now displays that as an option. I click that again to open it up. So based on the parameters that I pre-selected here, I can now make this a default by clicking in here to highlight it. Right click, copy. I don't have to worry about the details in this case. I'll go ahead and close it. Now I have to go back into edit mode. So let's go ahead and press the letter E or go ahead and press the button. And I want to go into the properties, so I click anywhere inside the box. Click properties. And here's the default state. So if I hit, click in here, right click and paste, I now have all that default information I would like to share with everyone else. Click OK. Now I have to click Save. And we should have check, marked, check marks for the labels here. And we do, apples, bananas, oranges. So it's possible for not only to not only have a chart, but you can actually customize the look and feel yourself. Go into this advanced and just copy and paste that into the properties doc that we just did. So in this case, I've done some work ahead of time where I decided to actually show the spreadsheet in an embedded gadget here. And I had the motion chart over here. So do we have any questions for that? Hey, Matt, I would like to also share uh, something from Dido Web that we that Dido was recently featured on something, so I'm going to go to that now. Absolutely. I visit the Dido, okay, when I go to the DidoWeb.com homepage and click on Services, Custom Development, in this case, Google App Scripts, you'll also find where Dido has been invited as guest blockers on the Google Apps Developer Block. The latest one that was published just last week is four ways to do mail merge using Google Apps Scripts. So if you visit DidoWeb.com and migrate your way to custom development and app scripts, you can come here and see that Dido has participated. In this case, I, I did the uh, participation with two other top contributors with App Scripts. And not to spend too much time on this, it's four ways to do mail merge using Google App Scripts. What is a mail merge? Well, a mail merge is basically taking like a template. Maybe it's a newsletter. Some people may use the uh, uh, MailChimp marketplace option. But it's the same technique. You have like a template, then you have data. Maybe it's a list of names, for example. You merge them together and you can maybe create an email and send them out. So here's four ways of accomplishing that. It's listed here. And number three is what Dotto participated in with the sample code and its own video. And that's what I wanted to share. So Matt, I can give it back to you hey, now. Steve, I, I think uh, also while we're here on our website, maybe we want to point out uh, a bit of a promotion that we're doing now. Um, we're offering a free Chromebook, uh, which is an Acer, Google Chromebook, Wi-Fi, take it on the go, do everything that you could on your desktop with Google Apps there, anywhere you have an internet connection. Um, you guys probably know a little bit about uh, the Google Chromebook, but if you'd like to learn more about our promotion, simply come to our website 
dinoweb.com. Click on that link there. And uh, what, we're, uh, what we're saying is if you purchase 50 licenses from Dido yourself as an organization, or if you were to refer somebody that has an organization of 50 users or more, and they decide to go Google with Dido, we will provide you with a, a free Chromebook. And uh, actually, I use mine day in and day out. I love it. I think it's awesome. It's lightweight. It's flexible. It's really easy to, to move on the go. It's a great piece of hardware, and we would like for you to experience the same. So if you get a chance, swing by our website, read about the promotion, and, um, and get the good word out there, okay? And Steve, I'll go ahead and take uh, control back here. All right, thank you, everybody. Yes, thank you, Steve. I, I appreciate that. Great presentation. All right, so we're going to wrap things up here with uh, just a, a couple of things I wanted to discuss with you all. You know, ultimately just some of the next steps. Again, you can always check out this webinar and other previously recorded webinars on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash DidoLLC. We're also on Twitter at, at DidoWeb and at Dido, excuse me, at Dido Trainer. You can see us on Facebook, facebook.com slash DidoLLC. And the blog, blog.didoweb.com, I frequently post on there, and we have some guests such as Steve and uh, other members of the Dido team that do post on there. We uh, post some really neat articles, some nice how-tos, and uh, really discuss some new features and everything. So please take some time to uh, go there, and you can also uh, go ahead and subscribe to RSS feeds there as well, so you don't have to go there every day. We'll just uh, automatically receive it in your inbox when we post. And the uh, last thing is Happy Halloween, everybody. I hope that everybody has a very safe and happy uh, Halloween this evening. And so uh, hopefully you get some really ghoulish costumes and, and fun stuff. If you want to send it over to us, we'd like to take a look. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll wrap things up there. If anybody has any questions, please feel free to go ahead and raise your hand or simply type your question in. And it can be anything Google Apps related. It doesn't have to be about what we talked discussed today. Maybe if you had a question about something, you can let us know, and we'll answer this for you. So uh, thanks again for your attendance. It was a pleasure, and we'll keep it open to some, for the uh, questions now. Right back at you, Norman. <laughs> Boo, it is. Yeah, it's going to be a fun night. Always is.